evening, folks. Ken Hoven here and the crew at Dinosaur Adventure Land. It is October 31st, 2018, and we're here to continue answering this, I guess it's the challenge that was accepted by Mr. Arn Nelson, who goes by Arn Ra. And uh, so we're going to continue with, uh, try to get a little bit more in of his uh, diatribe and answer line by line what he said. We have some folks in the audience here that have joined us that like, I saw one of Arn Ra's Nelson's uh, videos where he wears a cape. So I'm going to be one of the, he's got the black cape. I got the white one. There you go. <laughs> Julie, we need the fan on for the hair. Fan on for the hair. Okay. Do I look cool? Do I do I look more intimidating? Okay. Whoa. Whoa. Okay, thank you. <laughs> we will continue tonight. What we're going to do, like we did the last two broadcasts, is play and stop as necessary and interrupt and show where he gets uh yeah confused, I guess, on what different words, uh, how they apply. So here goes his, uh, where we left off last night, I think, okay? Believe that he ever attended any classes in any of them, and we know he didn't. He says, we don't know if Hovind ever attended classes in any of those countries, and we know he didn't. I'm not sure how you know such a thing, Mr. Nelson, but okay. He is the one who only walked onto a campus and picked up rocks. Oh, no, Mr. Nelson. I said, if I walked onto a campus and picked up a rock, can I say I've studied paleontology? You said, or Wikipedia said about you, that you studied paleontology in Dallas. That's all it said. That doesn't tell me what classes you took, if you passed the class, and what the teacher taught in the class. Some teachers teach things that are not true, you know. Yep. So, okay. Making false assumptions about every pile of dirt you happen to see is not the same thing as form. Oh, boy, do I agree. Making false assumptions about every pile of dirt or layer of rocks you see is not the same as being right, okay? You may be actually completely wrong, as we'll see in a minute here. Really studying a field that he obviously knows nothing at all about. Obviously knows nothing at all about. Well, that's what this debate is for. Show me your evidence for evolution, and we will take it small slice at a time, and I think I'll show you I do know quite a bit about these things, Mr. Nelson. Apart from believing that the Earth is only 6,000 years old and think- Wait, wait, wait. Apart from believing that the Earth is only 6,000 years old, Mr. Nelson, 6,000 is a long time, <laughs> long time. George Washington was president 200 and, what, 15 years ago. Columbus was driving around trying to find this place 500 years ago. The Vikings were running around beating up on folks 1,000 years ago. What do you mean only 6,000? 6, 6,000's a long time. Long time. Just because you believe in long ago and far away, far away fairy tale millions of years stuff, that doesn't make it true. But don't stop saying only 6,000. Why don't you say... God created the world 6,000 years ago. Whoa. Came the carbon-14 is used on Mesozoic fossils. Oh, there is no such thing as a Mesozoic fossil. The entire geologic column does not exist. There's no such thing as a Mesozoic era. There's no such thing as Triassic, Permian, Mississippian, Devonian. They're all rocks. And you put your interpretation on them based on which fossils are found in them. If it contains a dinosaur bone, it will be given the name Jurassic. If it contains a different bone, it's found something else. The, the rocks are assigned the strata, the name, Cenozoic, Mesozoic, Paleozoic, Archaeozoic, based upon the kinds of fossils they find. And then the fossils are dated based upon the layers they're found. It's complete circular reasoning. I'll show you. All of the textbooks will say there is such a thing as a geologic column, and they've got the names for them, Cretaceous, Jurassic, Triassic, Permian, Carboniferous, etc., in the early 1800s, this was made up, completely made up. Up until that time, everybody thought, hey, the flood of Noah deposited all these layers because you would have the tide going up and down while the flood's going on. The moon doesn't care there's a flood on the earth. It's going to keep causing the tide to come up and down, which means the water's going to be racing sideways, both directions, high tide, low tide. Now, in addition to vertical displacement of water, you've got horizontal displacement to fill that bump. All of those layers were formed in one year as is demonstrated by polystrata fossils, petrified trees standing up. But what they do, they made up this whole idea of a Mesozoic era. There's no such thing as a Mesozoic era, okay? The geologic column is in all the textbooks, and they give them ages of so many millions of years ago, and it's all baloney. You see, it's a fact 
the earth has layers of sedimentary rock. We've got them here on our property. Come see the gravel pit, layers of gravel. The evolutionists have an interpretation that say the layers form slowly over millions of years. The creationists have an interpretation that say those layers are from the flood of the days of Noah. Now you guys are always trying to erase this line and assume, like you just did, make your interpretation part of the fact. It is not. It's a fact the earth has layers. It is not a fact they're different ages by millions of years. The geologic column is actually your Bible, Mr. Nelson. It can only be found one place in the world, and that's in the textbooks. I googled today, where can the geologic column be found? And they said there is a spot in North Dakota, but the layers are kind of thin. Though, no, you may have found these 10 uh, eras, these 10 layers, in that particular order in one or two places around the world. But the whole thing is based on the assumption that the layers mean something. This guy, this textbook says, right over there on the shelf, if there were a column of sediments deposited continuously since the formation of the Earth, the entire history of the planet could be reconstructed. Unfortunately, no such column exists. The geologic column is a joke. It's a hoax. There is no geologic column. But they teach it like it's a fact. Like you saying, Hovan doesn't understand the Mesozoic era. There is no Mesozoic era. It doesn't exist, okay? If the geologic column existed in one place, it'd be 100 miles thick. It doesn't exist. This is lie number two on my video number four, lies in the textbooks. I'd recommend you watch that carefully. Now, I don't think anybody will argue. Yes, it's true. The earth has layers. But if those layers are different ages by millions of years, why are there no erosion marks between the layers? I mean, they're stacked up like pancakes on top of each other. Don't you think if this layer sat there for 12 million years waiting for the next one, it's going to rain once in a while? Hello? You can take a jar of water, dirt, sand, gravel, mud, shake it up and set it down. It settles out into layers. You can take those things with two layers of glass and sand in between, flip them around, play around with them and form all kinds of layers in a matter of seconds, Mr. Nelson. The layers of the earth were all formed during Noah's flood. So stop talking about this fictitious Mesozoic era. Okay, here's one right here with a mirror behind it. Okay, let's see. What do we got? We tip it. Let's see. Oh, there it goes. This is going to be the Cenozoic down here, folks. You can see that's about 14.629 million years old. Oh, now here comes, oh, Jurassic is coming on top. Whoa, millions of years ago. This is baloney. Okay? All right. So, but this is what we used in the Scopes Monkey Trial. Is that black book right there? The black, about yay big, hardback book. This, um, the world's most famous court trial. The Scopes Monkey Trial, they nicknamed it. In this trial, the evolutionist defending evolution and trying to get the teacher out of trouble, he said, the lowest layers are obviously the oldest. No, that's not necessarily true. You're starting with a false assumption. Example, when I was preaching in Union Center, South Dakota, middle of no place, we went to Rapid City, South Dakota, to the School of Mines. We're given the tour of the mine around the, you know, of the museum, and the guide stopped by the geologic time scale right here. I was there just a few months ago. It's still there. And he said, folks, this layer of rock right here is 70, and they, they always get the sanctimonious tone in their voice, 70 million years old. Oh. My daughter was 12 years old at the time. She said, uh, sir, how do you know that layer is 70 million years old? He said, we determine the age of the layers by the fossils they find in them, and that is exactly correct. Scientists use index fossils to determine the age of rock layers. So when you give your rebuttal to this, would you please tell me how you know a rock is Mesozoic without using any fossils? They didn't have, this was all made up in 1830 before there were any dating methods. Carbon dating, potassium, argon, rubidium, strontium, lead, 208. None of those had been thought of. They made it all up. Anyway, we walked around the other side of the dinosaur here and the Zuglodon, I believe. And my daughter said, or the guide said, now folks, these bones are 100 million years old. My daughter, 12 years old, raised her hand again. She said, sir, how do you know the age of those bones? He said, honey, we tell the age of the bones by which layer they come from. She said, uh, excuse me, sir, when we were standing over there, you told me you knew the age of the layers by the bones, and now you're telling me you know the age of the bones by the layers. She said, isn't that circular reasoning? That guy had a strange look on his face. It was almost as if he were thinking. He said, you're right, that's circular reasoning. Finding particular fossils indicates the age of the rock in which they are found. How do they date the rock? 
By the fossils. How do they date the fossils? By the rock. Circular reasoning. I call that stupid. I cannot think of a better word. I'm sorry. My mama would get mad, but she's up in heaven right now saying, son, you're right. That's stupid. Okay. And they themselves will admit it. This one on page one page says the layers of rock can be determined or can be dated by the types of fossils they contain. Next page in the same book, Glencoe Biology over there, says scientists determine the relative times of sequence and disappearance of many kinds from the location of their fossils in the sedimentary rock. So they date the rocks by the fossils, date the fossils by the rocks. Mr. Nelson, that's dumb. Dumb. And if you went to paleontology at Dallas, the University of uh, Texas in Dallas, and they taught you that, they taught you something that was dumb. You should not have swallowed that. You should have been smart enough to ask a question. Excuse me, teacher, this seems like circular reasoning. It is circular reasoning. The intelligent layman, this is American journalist science, has long suspected circular reasoning in the use of rocks to date fossils and fossils to date rocks. The geologist has never bothered to think of a good reply feeling the explanations are not worth the trouble as long as the work brings results. Ah, it cannot be denied from a strictly Encyclopedia Botanica. Mm -hmm. It cannot be denied from a strictly philosophical standpoint. Geologists are here arguing in a circle. The secession of organisms has been determined by a study of their remains embedded in the rocks. So they determined how they evolved by where they're found in the rocks. And the relative ages of the rocks are determined by the organ remains of the organisms they contain. Oh, circular reasoning. Ever since William Smith at the beginning of the 19th century, fossils have been and still are the best and most accurate method of dating and correlating the rocks in which they occur. Apart from very modern examples, which really are archaeology as opposed to paleontology, I can think of no cases of radioactive decay being used to date fossils. So don't tell your listeners they, date, they know, now know by carbon dating. They date the fossils by the rocks. They date the rocks by the fossils. Radiometric dating would not have been feasible if the geologic column had not been erected first. Whole thing's based on that stupid geologic column. Paleontologists cannot operate this way. There is no way simply to look at a fossil and say how old it is unless you know the age of the rocks it comes from. Think about that for five minutes. Niles Eldridge. When he came and spoke in Pensacola, he set up his video projector, slide projector, set up his pulpit, and the screen was behind him. And he started going through his slide presentation, and it, right in the middle of it, he got a big shadow of himself on the screen, bright lights on his face, can't see a thing. I went up and said, excuse me, sir, why don't you move your pulpit over here? Oh, okay, good idea. Niles Eldridge, one of the famous evolutionists, it says, you can't tell the age of a fossil unless you know the age of the rocks it comes from. He said, this poses something of a problem. If we date the rocks by their fossils, how can we then turn around and date, talk about patterns of evolutionary change through time in the fossil record? Mr. Nelson, there is no geologic column. There is no Mesozoic era. The rocks do date the fossils, but the fossils date the rocks more accurately. Whoa, brilliant. Give that guy a PhD. Stratigraphy cannot avoid this kind of reasoning if it insists on using temporal concepts because circularity is inherent in the derivation of time scales. That's the only way they can do it. The charge of circular reasoning, in other words, if somebody accuses you of using circular reasoning, which I'm doing for you here, can be in stratigraphy, can be handled several ways. It can be ignored. Forget it. It's not the proper concern of the public. Basically, that says it's none of your business how we do it. We're doing it. Secondly, it can be denied by calling down the law of evolution. That's what you do in your three reasons. I fi you finally get around to giving your three evidences for evolution. Number three, I think, is calling down the law of evolution. It can be admitted as a common practice or it can be avoided by pragmatic reasoning. So, so let's see. Somebody talks about circular reasoning. You could ignore their charge. You can deny it. You can admit it and say that's the way we have to do it. Or you can avoid it by pragmatic reasoning. Let's talk about something else. Go off, change the subject here. Are the authorities maintaining on the one hand that evolution is documented by geology, and on the other, that geology is documented by evolution. Isn't that a circular argument? Biologists, help. Uh, let me add to that. Geologists, help. Everybody, help. How do we get out of this? This is real simple. Admit there is no geologic column. It doesn't happen. The lowest layers are obviously the oldest from the Scopes Monkey Trial. Did you find that book? No, it's over there somewhere. Anyway, that is simply not true. And be careful about the movie Inherit the Wind, where they tried to reenact the Scopes Monkey Trial. 
The whole purpose of that was to make Christians look stupid. It is not at all accurate compared to the movie or compared to the, the real, real trial. There's a guy, I don't know if George Serrell's number is still good, but it was excellent what he did on uh, his expose of Inherit the Wind compared to the real trial. Anyway, in moving water, when water is moving sideways, multiple layers are deposited rapidly. Many layers at the same time. There's a video clip uh, from the Colorado um, Air Navy has a, uh, a big flume in Colorado where they do testing of sedimentation because they want to know where they can park their submarines to hide them. And valleys fill in all the time. The, stuff move, the ocean is moving underneath too, as well as the top. So they've done a lot of study on sedimentation rates. They say, and they show pictures with the glass sides on the water flowing through this thing. There's 10 or 15 layers forming at the same time sideways. Well, with the moon pulling the tides up, that water's rushing sideways to fill that bump. At the equator, 1,038 miles an hour. At Lenox, Alabama, about 800 miles an hour. Sideways moving water is going to deposit lots of strata, which means you could end up with something dying and be stuck on top that's actually older than one stuck at the bottom. It doesn't, the top ones are not younger than the, old, the bottom ones. That's circular reasoning. All through your geologic column, you have limestone scattered in there. Limestone, 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 limestone. I ask atheists, how do you tell the difference between 100 million year old Jurassic limestone and 600 million year old Cambrian limestone? How do you tell the difference? They will tell you by the index fossils. If it contains a trilobite, it's got to be 600 million years old. This textbook right here. Trilobite fossils make good index fossils. If a trilobite is found in a rock layer, it probably formed 500 to 600 million years ago. So I'm sorry, Mr. Nelson. Meses, there's no such thing as a Mesozoic era. It doesn't happen. So, Mr. Nelson, there is no geologic column. There is no Mesozoic era. Let's continue here. Hovind also thinks that reptiles never stop growing. Hovind thinks that reptiles never stop growing. Do reptiles ever stop growing? According to Indiana Public Media, the skeletons of most mammals reach a certain size and then stop growing. However, many animals, including some mammals, keep growing throughout their lives. Kangaroos, for example, just keep growing and growing until they die. Let me continue the quote here. Most fish, amphibians, lizards, and snakes are also indeterminate growers, which means they don't stop growing. Mr. Nelson, you said Hoven thinks reptiles never stop growing. No, Hoven knows reptiles never stop growing. Study your science, Mr. Nelson. Okay, let's go ahead and that dinosaurs are just modern lizards that lived too long and got real big. No, I've never said dinosaurs are modern lizards. I, dinosaurs are reptiles, that's what the word means, dinosaur, terrible reptile, terrible, um, so, terrible lizard. So the dinosaurs, some of them may be completely extinct. I mean, there may be nothing similar today on the market alive, but many reptiles, all reptiles today never stop growing until they die, of course. So don't say Hovind thinks that. That is a scientific fact. They don't. Neither do kangaroos, by the way. So study it out before you accuse me of being stupid about this. And the plesiosaurs had cartilaginous skeletons. Plesiosaurs had cartilaginous skeletons. When have I ever said that? A plesiosaur has bones. It swims in the water. Grab me the plesiosaur out of there, would you? Uh, out of the science center. No. Plesiosaurs have bones. Is that one? Here we go. There you go. Thank you. And I got one here. They had, I've never, I don't think I've ever said they had cartilage and a skeleton. Why would you lie about me like that? I've never said any such thing. It had a skeleton. They find this bones of them all the time. Even when other creation is correcting on these things. Nobody's ever accused me of believing plesiosaurs have a cartilage and a skeleton. Nobody's ever correct. They don't need to correct me on that. I didn't say it. Where do you get this stuff? <laughs> anyway. Anyway. So he has absolutely no paleontological comprehension or education. I have no comprehension or education in paleontology. It's possible to read books and learn things. You don't have to get a degree from uh, a secular university. I'll show you in a second here. Whatsoever. Even without graduating, I have better credentials than he has. You have an associate's degree. That's a two-year degree from a junior college, or was it, was it the university? Uh, so while you were getting your degree, you did not have it, obviously, so you had a high school diploma. Listen to what he says here. At least my associates in science degree is real. Associates in science degree is real. I'm also a reverend. 
like he is, albeit for a better religion. Dudeism. And he got his doctorate the same way I got my ordination. He bought his PhD from a mail order and didn't know he was even supposed to have a thesis first until he... Okay, this is not correct. When I got my doctorate in education, they were, Patriot University was part of Hilltop Baptist Church in Colorado Springs. Many churches offer classes. They offered their classes by correspondence. I worked very hard for my degree. I don't know if you worked hard for yours or cheated or I don't know. Some people do cheat for their degree. I worked hard for my degree. I took all the classes by correspondence. Probably University of Texas, Dallas offers courses by correspondence and by internet. I would be willing to bet money that they do. Later, long after I graduated, Patriot Univers University moved out to Del Norte, Colorado in a double wide house. And they take pictures of that house and circulate it all over the place as if that means something. I should have, when I was up at Rutgers University, taken a picture. They had a Chinese, I think it was a Chinese language studies department. It was a under a stairwell. You open the door, there's a little bitty space with a desk and one secretary and a phone. That was it. Their whole Chinese studies department, if you could get a, probably get a bachelor's or master's and PhD from Rutgers University from a cl janitor's closet. Right? Yeah, but it's part of Rutgers. Okay, well, Patriot University is part of Colorado and it's huge. <sighs> Gee whiz. Okay. He already had his followers calling him doctor. I did not He's let not anybody. I did not let anybody call me doctor. People can call me whatever they want, okay? And they do, by the way. Uh, I don't care. I, the doctor means nothing to me. But I worked very hard for my degree. I don't know if you worked hard for yours or not. It doesn't matter. Forget it. Here you are going off, going off an ad hominem argument again. So I'm gonna have to counter that. He's a charlatan. Yet he calls into question that I actually studied biology, historical geology, and paleontology. If you studied those things from a teacher who believed they came from a rock and who believe the layers are different ages, I'm sorry, I'm not impressed either. So if you studied those things from a teacher who was an idiot, that's going to make you into an idiot. I'm not impressed with that. It doesn't matter. The subject of this discussion, debate, whatever you want to call it, is supposed to be, where's the evidence for evolution? We're up to 14 minutes now, Mr. Nelson, and you've done nothing but attack me personally. Where's the beef? Along with taxonomy at the University of Texas at Dallas, so you're claiming you studied all these things at the University of Texas in Dallas. Maybe you, maybe you did. Wonderful. But if they taught you evolution, you learned something that was wrong. There are people that study and get PhDs in Buddhism, and they learn all about Buddhism and how to all the, do all the chants and how to wear the robe and all this stuff. You can get a PhD in Islam. You can get a PhD in underwater basket weaving, probably. So what? Let's get to the topic, please. Where's the beef for evolution? That means I'm taking classes with actual professors and working as a scientist, both in the lab and... You are working as a scientist, and all you have is a high school diploma. Are you admitting that a person with a high school diploma can be a scientist? He didn't have his associate degree yet. So while you're getting your associate degree, you were a scientist. Are you a scientist right now, Mr. Nelson? Are you, are you a scientist? Yes or no? Just we'll pause. Never mind. You're going to pause later. Okay. So you're working as a scientist, and all you have is a high school diploma. Okay. Remember that, please. I'll I'll rub your nose in that a time or two later if you keep accusing me of something that you shouldn't. In the field, not just pretending to know everything already like he does. Pretending What's to it? know everything. Listen to yourself, son. <laughs> listen to yourself. Ah, okay. Listen to this now. The way he spins it. My education can't measure up to his complete lack of any relevant training. Your education can't measure up to my lack of relevant training. Let me show you about education and what is necessary here. I just Googled people who were successful but did not have an education, never finished school. Well, they gave a list, 50 extremely successful people who never finished school. George Washington, President of the United States, never finished school. Abe Lincoln had a total of one year, total of one year of education, total of one, okay? Harry Truman, Grover Cleveland, Zach Taylor, Andrew Johnson, John Glenn, Barry Goldwater, Benjamin Franklin, Winston Churchill, John Major, Prime Minister of England, Robert Frost, Florence Nightingale, Buckminster Fuller, George Eastman, founder of Eastman Kodak, Ray Kroc, founder of McDonald's, 
None of these people had an education. Didn't even finish high school, most of them. Uh, George Bernard Shaw, Peter Jennings, news anchor for ABC, Christopher Columbus, T.D. Jakes, Joel Olstein, John D. Rockefeller, dropped out of high school, didn't want to finish. Carl Rove, Ted Turner, uh, founder of the Communist News Network, CNN. <clears throat> Mark Twain, uh, you can go through and just Google. Andrew Carnegie, I'll just skip to a few of them here. Henry Ford, Paul Getty, Jack London, the author. Uh, Mark Zuckerberg, founder of Facebook. You think he's kind of successful? How much money does he have? Billions. Huh? Billions. Billions, okay. Dropped out of school. Steve Wozniak, founder of Apple. Bill Gates. Ringo Starr. Who cares? So don't tell me you have to have some kind of education. I think I'm going to have to disagree with that, okay? I think you can actually read a book without going to school and learn some things. Abe Lincoln stayed home and read books. He was a lawyer and then became president of the United States. So no, this is a completely off track argument, but so many of you atheists and evolutionists use this and you want to take pick on my degree as if because I didn't get it from one of your universities, therefore I'm stupid. I'm sorry, I'm not gonna let that go on. It's, first of all, it doesn't matter, but it's not true. I have read thousands of books in my lifetime. I'm a readaholic. I read 1,800 books while I was in prison. I wrote 37 books while I was in prison. I try to use my time wisely. I research lots of stuff all the time. So let's please, it's been 14 minutes and 20 seconds now. You still haven't given the three evidences for evolution. Hovind says he was a high school science teacher for 15 years, but he's never worked in any high school. You are lying through your teeth, son. I was pastor at Bethel Baptist Church in Pekin, Illinois on Broadway, and I started a Christian school. We had about 80 students, and I taught there. I resigned from there and moved to Kankakee, El Bourbonnet, Illinois, at Faith Baptist Church and worked in their Christian school. I was the math and science teacher. Pastor Gray then left and moved to Texas and kept calling, Kent, I need you down here. I need your math skills in our school in Longview, Texas. I taught at Longview Christian Academy for five years, and, one of the, and I taught in the college, Texas Baptist College. <clears throat> one of the students in the college was from California. He told his dad, who was a pastor of a church in Fairfield, California, Calvary Baptist Church on Gregory Street, 600 Gregory, Dad, you've got to get this guy to come out and work in our school. He knows his math and science. And so they kept calling and saying, would you please come out here? So finally, my wife and I flew out to California to Fairfield and accepted the job to work at Calvary Baptist Christian School in Fairfield, California, where I was for about three years. And then we moved to Pensacola, Florida, where I worked at East Hill Christian School before I finally started my own ministry. Mr. Nelson, you're lying about me. I did teach. I've never said it was public schools. I've always taught in Christian schools. I've spoken in many public schools and intend to get in more and teach them the truth that evolution is dumb. Dumb. And if that bothers you, I'm sorry. I think it bothers me that you guys teach your religion at my expense. Anyway, you are simply mistaken. I did not, I, I did teach in schools, 15 years, high school math and science. Instead, what he did was go into churches on occasion to lie to homeschool students about the pseudoscience nonsense yeah. he believes in. You are lying through your teeth, son. I did not go into homeschool, teach homeschool classes in churches once in a while. I taught in Christian schools. About 12% of the American population, as the last I heard, goes to, pub, or goes to private schools. There's nothing wrong with that. Actually, probably better. And I, I would challenge, I would put my math and science skills against most other high school science and math teachers. I think if we could sit and have a conversation about algebra, geometry, trigonometry, they'd come away and say, well, he really knows those subjects. You want to talk about earth science, biology, physical science? I think any other teacher would sit and talk with me for a while and say, well, he's knowledgeable on those subjects. I, I, I think I really am, Mr. Nelson. And even if you don't get a degree from an accredited university, you can read a book, you know, like all those other successful people did and get your own education. I make educational videos for high school kids. So oh, that's proof you're smart. <clears throat> so I could call myself a high school teacher with more justification than he has. If that would be more justification than I have after being in the classroom for 15 years, uh, you believe whatever you want. I was in the classroom teaching students those subjects, and I think I can hold my own on any of those topics. Ask any of the former students I had. They loved it. I know all kinds of math shortcuts. Let's see, two-digit number. 52 times 48 is going to be 2496. Pick another two-digit number. 88. 88 times 92 is going to be 8096, <laughs> Mr. Nelson. What if I did that? 
it'd be just as dishonest as every time he did that. I'm not being dishonest about it. The reason I've never mentioned until this broadcast which schools I taught at is because I know some of you morons are going to go try to check out that school and try to try to draw attention away from the fact that I taught school. You're looking for any excuse. Well, that's just a small school. They've only got 200 students. You, you, watch. That'll be in the comment section on this one. They'll pick. They'll miss the obvious. The obvious. This is a distraction to try to get away from the uh, the truth of evolution is a religion. If you so choose, Aaron, after our dis to continue this discussion. I thought this was going to be a debate at our previous meeting with the discussion. You're still not giving the evidences for evolution, Mr. Nelson. Quit talking about the word debate and discussion. I'm sorry I brought it up. Call it both. Pick a new name for it. Then you can pick an, make another video of your next best three evidences for evolution. <clears throat> and we'll do the same thing again. I don't think we'll get that far. I don't I think Hovind is going to face plant in the very first round like he did in our previous meeting. Hovind's going to face plant in the first round. This is my third video going up tonight here, Mr. Nelson. I don't think I face planted on any of them. Because he can't get through this knowing as little as he does, especially not when he has to follow the same rules that I do. And now that we got the preliminaries out of the way, I guess the debate starts now. Yay, I lost the pause button. Aaron said, no matter how oh, there it is. Okay. you think you know it, if you can't right. show it, then you don't know it. Rewind, start over. And you should okay. say that you do. You can say rewind 10 seconds, arrow right there next to the play button. Oh, okay. Go 10 more. Yeah. Knowing as little as he does, especially. Knowing as little as I do. I've done 151 debates. If you want to count this one, it be 152. Go watch some of them. Everybody else watches them and says, wow, this guy knows his subject. I think I do know my subject. What do you mean knowing as little as he knows? Stick to the topic. Where's your evidence for evolution? We're still waiting on the beef, Sean. Okay. When he has to follow the same rules that I do. Oh, no, I'm following the rules. This is nice, being able to pause to shut you up and stop you from all you going running on and on and on, diarrhea of the mouth, and be able to stop and talk about word at a time. I'm enjoying this. I'll do this with you for the rest of my life, if you'd like, to straighten out the lies that you teach people. Got the preliminaries out of the way? I guess the debate starts now. Bingo. You're on. Got it. Aaron said, no matter how positively you think you know it, if you can't show it, then you don't know it. And you shouldn't say that you do. Aaron, I'd like you to follow your own advice. I've been asking here, can you show me the evidence for how any of these things evolved? Where, not a line on paper, where's the evidence? How did we get butterflies from nothing? How did we get broccoli from nothing or a bear or a backbone? Go back and look, look at the video. Only creationists believe that complex interdependent systems and organisms poofed out of nothing. Whoa, 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 no. The evolutionists are the ones who believe all these complex systems poofed out of nothing. Oh, yeah. Let me show you. Okay, Mr. Nelson, for the last 61 broadcasts on my channel, I have been talking about different creatures. I just drew one up randomly talking about the ant lion. So this is clear back from letter A, okay? But you can see these quotes on all of them. According to your religion of evolutionism, the ant lions came from a dot of nothing that exploded. This is University of Oregon. They are showing a drawing how the Big Bang is where nothing exploded and turned into the guy doing the Valsalva maneuver. I'm sorry, rapidly expanded. The most important information that few people know, the universe is 13.798 billion years old, with a sphere diameter of 93 billion light years. How they know that? If light, unless light traveled faster than light, that's another topic. Never mind. Virtual particles that convey temporary mass continuously pop in and out of existence in the empty space, the nothingness between the quarks. 90% of you, including antlines, is nothing. The universe formed by matter and condensing out of the energy, an inflating singularity 13.798 billion years old ago. You came from energy. You are energy. All matter came from energy. The inflating singularity that formed the universe came from nothing. Only creationists believe we came from nothing. Uh, this guy's University of Ohio, Mr. Nelson. Okay. The singularity was an unstable, ultra-high energy virtual particle that spontaneously appeared out of the nothingness of a quantum vacuum. You came from nothing. Everything comes from nothing. Wow. Hi, I'm James St. John, University of Ohio. How about Alan Guth? The observable universe could have evolved from an infinitesimal region. It's then tempting to go one step further and speculate the entire universe evolved from literally nothing. Why would you say only creationists believe it poofed out of nothing? You are mistaken, okay? 
Then you want to get into the primordial soup. I got plenty of quotes on that. I do this every night in my broadcast. Here's your theory. Nothing exploded and made everything. Then the earth cooled down and a rocky surface was created. As the earth formed, the surface was hot like the moon. There were hard, large pools of bubbling lava. There was no oxygen, but the rocks absorbed it anyway. I've never understood that one. Oceans formed as it rained on the rocks for millions of years. Millions of years of torrential rains created the oceans. Swirling in the waters of the oceans is a bubbling broth of complex chemicals. Progress from a complex chemical soup to a living organism is very slow. Boy, it sure is. It's completely stopped. Doesn't happen at all. Never happened. Life on Earth may have begun in rocks on the ocean floor more than four billion years ago. The first self-replicating systems must have emerged in this organic soup. This is exactly what the textbooks teach. The Earth began as a hot ball of rock. About 3.9 billion years ago, Earth had cooled enough for water vapor to condense. The Earth was, for the first time, experiencing violent rainstorms. Eventually, the accumulated rainfall formed Earth's oceans. It is in these oceans, 3.5 billion years ago, the scientists believe the first living organisms appeared. Just poof out of the soup. 13.798 billion years ago, Big Bang. Earth formed 4.6 billion years ago. Rained on the rocks for millions of years. Turned them into soup, and the soup came alive. So there's Grandpa. This is exactly what you teach, that nothing formed everything. Don't tell me that I don't know what I'm talking about. I, this is exactly what you guys believe. So, Mr. Nelson, let's go on with your uh, diatribe here. Inherent modification, meaning... There you go. You're wanting to define evolution as descent with modification. You're, you are completely baffled. There are six different levels to this. Descent from what? You're going to skip living organisms coming from the soup. They, that's what the textbooks teach. You're going to skip the... Where did matter itself come from? How did the stars get there? How did life get started? Descent with modification is only going to give you varieties of dogs. It's not going to change a pine tree to a dog. It's not going to change an amoeba to a dog. You're d selecting your own wording definition of the word evolution to get out of the obvious your theory is dumb. <laughs> the whole theory includes much more than that. Genetic modification, variable only. Genetic modification, well, then you already got to have a gene code. Well, then the gene, the gene code itself is phenomenally complex. Study some genetics. You think the gene code happened by chance? What is the chance of lightning striking a computer and creating a whole new program like PowerPoint? Zero. Steel frequencies at the population level. I've seen you say that you accept that this happens, and that you even accept speciation. Of course, you don't realize that counts as macroevolution. No, Mr. Nelson, speciation does not count as macroevolution. People, somebody in the 1600s, Carolus Linnaeus, I believe it was 1600s, used to, made up our classification system: kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, species. God said they're going to bring forth after their kind, kind. Okay. It could be that our species level is not the same as the kind level in the Bible. It could be that it's more like the family level in some cases. It could be it's more like the order level in some cases. I don't know. Forget what Carolus Linnaeus said. God said they'll bring forth after their kind. That's all anybody's ever seen. So just because somebody decided to call a wolf and a dog and a coyote and a, a, a different species doesn't mean they're not the same kind of animal. This is where they always muddy the water. Trying to say, oh, well, it's a different... Look at this, we got a new species. There are how many species of ladybugs? I forget how many I found out, like 3,000? It's a bug. <laughs> Gee whiz. You even accept ring species, which opposes it. Ring species is if a group of animals lives in one area, and some of them move around an obstacle, like a canyon or an ocean or something, and end up on the opposite side. They might be very different. The two squirrels on the opposite sides of Grand Canyon, the Kaibab squirrel and the Abert squirrel, are very, very different looking. They're still a squirrel. Okay, squirrel. That's not evolution. That's a ring species. And somebody decided the Abert squirrel and the Kaibab squirrel are different species. Okay, they're still the same kind of animal. Then refutes your own notion of created kinds. It does not refute my own notion of created kinds. We've only covered a few more minutes. This is going to take about a year. I think it needs to be done. I, okay, I apologize. But the comment section is exploding on these YouTubes. I think it's helping a lot of people because guys like you, people have to face guys like this in class as their teacher. Yeah. Yeah. Thou tens of thousands of students have to sit under this kind of stuff all day long. 
and it destroys their faith and they don't get time to stop and interrupt. I want to help you. I know I'll probably never reach him. I understand that he's, his mind isn't like concrete, all mixed up and firmly set. But He's at least watching you. He's at least watching for sure. <clears throat> now, but this is helping the students, and I apologize we're wasting precious Bible study time. We could be talking about different creatures, and I'm excited to get to monkeys next. But we're going to delay that for a minute and go to at, at least probably one more, maybe two more. Maybe it's covering I won't tell you, I don't know how many. We'll see. I try to cut it off at 40, 45 minutes. But I'm sorry, Mr. Nelson. You're 0 for 100 so far on your points you're making. And I'm loving life. See, you're used to the uh, raw rat rush where you rush off and give 40 points and you accuse me of doing the gish gallop. It's you that does this. And this is great being able to stop word by word if necessary and explain it. How many of you this is helping explain some of this stuff? You say, wow. But see, a student doesn't get to do that to their teacher. They're frantically taking notes, trying to get all this stuff down. And after an hour, the teacher's got them all bamboozled. I will come to any university and debate any professor on the topic of evolution anywhere. I'll pay my way to get there. If U.S., I don't want to go somewhere else and pay $4,000 for a ticket to talk for an hour. But uh, I'll, I'll come, to, come to the university. I'll take on all the professors at the same time if I get half the time and we talk about one topic at a time. You want to talk about does speciation equal macroevolution like you just said? No, it does not. Macroevolution is where an animal produces a different kind of animal. That's never happened. You can believe it if you want. You and SpongeBob can start your own school, but it's not science. More tomorrow. Thank you, folks, for joining us. Push thumbs up, like us, subscribe, ring the bell. Come visit Dinosaur Adventureland. John, good to have you here. Uh, it's a lot of work. Right? You showed up, put right to work, right? Yeah. Yeah. Got it. <laughs> Thank you. Awesome. It's a, this is an amazing place. It's coming together. There's a whole lot to do. Appreciate you coming. Uh, see you tomorrow. Bye.